Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the game Until Dawn running on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you've got an M1, M2, M3 or future M4 Mac, then this is going to be the tutorial for you. So there is no Mac port of this game, we're going to be running the Windows version on the Apple Silicon Mac. And in order to do this, we need to use a translation layer. And we also have an issue with AVX CPU feature set. And unfortunately, the Apple Silicon Mac doesn't support this, even if you have Mac OS Sequoia and CX patch exposing AVX. Therefore, we need to make use of a patch which which I'm going to be showing you how to apply today on the Windows version of the game so that it can be run through the Windows translation layer called Crossover. We're also going to be applying CX Patcher, which gives us the latest version of D3D Metal, which allows this game to run as well as possible using DirectX 12. So the first step is going to be to download Crossover. So what I recommend doing is clicking at the link at the top of this video's description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. Once you're taken to the purchase page, you'll be able to enter this promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New. And once you press the arrow button here, it's going to go ahead and apply a 20% off discount, which is pretty huge, off Crossover Plus, which is the version that we recommend for 12 months of support. However, if you want to make sure that this works for you, make sure to check out the 14 day free trial, which is what I'm going to be trialing today. Just click this try now button and then scroll down. And all we need to do is enter our email address and name and then click the download trial now button. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to copy it over to our applications folder and then we're going to double click to open it for the first time. Press open. It might ask you to install Rosetta 2, just let that install. And then we're going to do the free trial or if you have unlocked this already, you can enter your details here from the Codeweavers account. So I'm going to try now to start the 14 day free trial. And basically we're ready to go ahead and use Crossover. But the first thing I'm going to do is to quit out and we're going to make the modifications to Crossover. This is an optional step that will allow us to use the latest versions of D3D Metal. At the time of recording, that's version 2.0 beta 3. So here we're going to be downloading the latest version of CX Patcher which I'll be leaving a link in the description and we're going to be using 0.5.6 and this contains the latest update to Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 which is D3D Metal 2.0 Beta 3. So here what we're going to do is go to Assets and then download the cxpatcher.app.zip and then put this in our Downloads folder. And once that's there we're going to go to Finder and then go to Downloads and then we'll go to cxpatcher, double click to extract this and then we're going to move this into our Applications folder. We are going to make sure that we open up Crossover first before we start this process and then close it and then we're going to double click on CX Patcher. If it says it can't be opened, then go to the settings menu here, go to system settings, and then go to security and privacy, and then scroll down until we find here, it says CX Patcher can't be opened. It was blocked to protect your Mac. Click open anyway. And here we can close this and press open anyway. Then we're going to type in our password and then log in. That's okay. And this will basically allow us to open up applications which aren't from the App Store. Type in your password, press okay. So just be aware that, of course, this is not a supported method of patching crossover. This really comes at your own risk. Do not ask for code weavers for support or refund if you're using this method. They will not be able to help you. If you need help from code weavers, then you should be waiting for official support, which is probably going to come in the very near future. If you want to be able to use this, you need to type in this full phrase and then press agree and proceed. Now CX Patch is ready to use. So we're going to configure some settings first, go to advanced options, and then we're going to be enabling DXVK integrate GPTK. We're going to use a separate bottle path. We're going to be advertising AVX. We're going to be allowing DXVK async, and then we can tweak some of these settings too. So now we're going to drag and drop crossover into CX Patcher. Now CX Patcher is ready to go. So double click on crossover. Say we're going to install Steam. Install. Click yes here. Accept. And now we're just going to go through the standard Windows setup of Steam. And now that's going ahead and downloading Steam. So make sure to allow any kind of permissions that the bottle requests. And then I also advise turning on D3D Metal and also the M-Sync option and then reboot the bottle. This allows us to run DirectX 11 and 12 games through crossover. Then we're going to make sure to launch Steam. So here we're going to log in with our Steam account. So if you don't have one already, you can create one for free. So now that we have the Windows version of Steam loaded up, we can go into a library and basically download any game that we have. So next, what we're going to do is buy until dawn or basically download the Windows version of this game. So just make sure to add this to your basket, make a purchase. And if it's already in your library, then just click on library, do a search for until dawn and then make sure that we install it. So we're going to install it in its default location. And if you try to run this, then you're going to get into some errors. So what we're going to do is make some modifications. So next, what we're going to do is to download the AVX patch. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the video description. It says here, until dawn remake skip AVX check. 
And this is going to allow us to skip the AVX check that the game is going to request. And this applies to both versions of the game. So at the moment, this one is 1.000. And this is for the current Steam release as of 9th of October 2024, which is 1.004.zip. So this will change per patch. If you wanted to do this yourself, this is quite straightforward to do using something called Hexfiend. You can just modify the EXE yourself in order to skip the AVX check here using these instructions. I'll leave a link to this in the description. But hopefully in the future, this will be up to date. So now we're going to download the current Steam release, which is 1.004.zip. Press download. So we're going to download this now. And then that's finished downloading. We're going to go to Finder. And then we're going to go to our downloads folder and then double click the Bates Win64 shipping. Then we're going to type in the password PCGW. So the password's written here, PCGW. Then press OK. So that's going to extract the file. And then we have this one called Bates Win64 shipping. So just go ahead and make a copy of this. Press Edit and then Copy. And then we're going to navigate to the actual Steam library. So we're going to go to our crossover and then go to Steam Bottle here, control click, and then open C drive. And then within here, by default, you'll see this program files x86, expand this, go to Steam, expand this, scroll down to Steam Apps, common, and then the Until Dawn folder should be there. Mine is actually in a different location. And then we want to go into the Windows folder, then to Bates, then to Binaries, then Win64. So within Win64, this is the main exe file. So that's what launches when you open up this game on Steam. And uh, I'm going to rename the original one to this org. Then we're going to paste the patch file that we just downloaded, press paste item, and then that's pasted in. Then what we're going to do is go back into the Windows version of Steam, and then we're going to open up Until Dawn. So when we play this now, it's going to skip the AVX check. There are going to be some error messages, so don't worry about that too much but it's going to work fine. So here, just press close on the Wine Debugger. So this screen is going to pop up. If you don't see the warning screen, you can always uh, can kind of hold click on the application itself. And we have the warning known issue with graphics driver. So don't worry about this too much. You don't have to download a graphics driver. We don't have any for Mac, just press no. And then the game's going to continue launching. If you can't proceed past this step, then make sure to select this. Uh, if you can't see it, then I recommend uh, using this application called Alt Tab. I'll leave a link to this in the description. You can Alt Tab between the different kind of sub windows of each application. We're going to press OK here where it says that it can't open the SDK runtime. Press OK and then kind of do a search again for using Alt Tab. Just press OK to all of these missing runtimes. And don't worry about that. So it's saying here preparing shaders. We're running here on uh, Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 Beta 3 with DirectX 12. So I have tested this on DirectX 11. I actually find that it runs better on DirectX 12. So just be aware of that. This normally works better on DirectX 11, but on the Mac anyway, it feels like it's working better on DirectX 12. So by default, I've got this set to screen percentage 100, and then we've got the overall quality set to high, and it looks pretty good. Also, it's a really good idea to play this game with a controller. So I've got my Xbox Series controller. You can also do this with the PlayStation DualSense controller. I'm going to put my control into pairing mode by holding down the pairing button here. And then the Xbox light is going to start flashing. You can also do this on DualSense controller as well. Then we're going to go to system settings. And then we're going to go to Bluetooth. And then scroll down until under near by devices, we see that the Xbox wireless control has popped up here. We're going to press connect. And then they'll just take a moment for that to connect. And once it's connected, the light on the controller is going to go a solid light like that. And then that's now paired up. So here you can see you can basically play the game with a controller now. And it's probably working with the Xbox controller with all the triggers and buttons functioning correctly. So overall, I'm impressed with the performance. It seems to be working pretty well on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip at 1080p on high. It's worth experimenting with your own setup, seeing how this works. Uh, we tried this on DirectX 12 mode, but you can also launch with the Dash DX11 parameter to see if this works better for you. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.